Hi, today I'm going to show you how you can use a Power Automate flow to add profiles to a SharePoint people web part. So let's start. So to set the scene, um, this is a SharePoint page. As you can see, it has um, meet the team kind of content. So um, yeah, there's a name of a department and the department members and a text web part on the right hand side. So typically what you have to do to create this is to manually configure and add these kind of people to the web part. And what I'm now or today gonna show you is how you can create the same page by using a Power Automate flow. So yeah, let's switch to our flow design. So uh, this flow is roughly divided up into three main areas. Uh, I've put them in scopes, so it's a bit more clear. So uh, part one is the retrieval of the data via a graph API call. Uh, the second part is reformatting it into suitable uh, format for the people web part. And the last part of this demo is how you can create and publish that page on SharePoint. So that's in the third scope. Um, so let's start. Let's let me talk you through this setup. Um, so it's a manually triggered flow. So yeah, nothing more, nothing less. Um, it's also using four initialized variables. Uh, the first one is actually a department name. So in here I provided a value called sales. So in this case, it's a sales department. And then I'm initializing two array variables, the name array and the email array, uh, both of type and only having an empty array. And then the last one is a counter, which is of type integer. So this, we are using this to count through the results. Um, I will show you later why. Um, and then the last action is um, retrieving the page author uh, profile. So it's useful to have uh, to publish it, this page as somebody else. So that's where this is used for. So that's yeah the prep for the actual uh, flow. Um, so let's go look into the first part, the retrieval of data from the Graph API. So as you can see, it has only one action, which is the send an HTTP request. Uh, this is from the Office 365 Groups connector, to be clear. And within this action, uh, yeah, we only have one thing uh, which is important, and that's the URI. So it's the Graph API URI, uh, and it's using the users method, as you can see in here. And then it's using a filter on department. And that department is obviously using a department name. So yeah, that's here. Um, so that's the first part. So that should give us a list of only the sales users. So the second part um, is reformatting it to making it suitable for um, the people web part. Uh, that's a bit more extensive. So first of all, what we're doing is um, for that uh, people web part, we don't need every single thing of a user, every single property. So um, there are two parts, uh, a persons and a searchable plain text property, which are need to be set in the people web part. So that's why you're seeing two selects. So the persons is using uh, the output of our earlier, um, yeah, used or created sent an HP request web part. So you can see the reference here in the in the action name, and then it's uh, uh, it's using the list of values, which is the value property. And yeah, what what I also did in this setup is I'm not only using that in the select, but I'm also sorting it at the same time. So that's why you see a sort around it and it's sorting it on display name. So that's that last property. So that's a pretty new function, but it's very useful. Um, so that's the from field, uh, which you also can see here in the tooltip. And then in the map, we're selecting all the values. So things like the ID, which is 
the mill, the UPN, which again is the mill uh, role, which is uh, corresponds with the job title. So yeah, it's a key value mapping. So you can see every single thing in here. And uh, notice that I reused the variable department name because it should contain the sales one because that's what we filtered on. But um, yeah, you could obviously also use the item uh, department or the department field of the item. Um, so that's the persons. Um, the searchable plain text is pretty similar. So the from is exactly the same um, expression. And the person's name, key, and the person's email, yeah, they, those also look uh, use the same kind of uh, reference. So to the email and the display name. Uh, do use the same uh, key name because obviously that's what the SharePoint web part is expecting. So don't change this to something different. So that's the persons and the searchable plain text um, selections. Um, the persons we can easily use that in our people web part, the searchable plain text actually needs to be reformatted even more. And that's where that's why you see this apply to each. So in this apply to each, um, we're looping to the items through the items of this, this select and per item, we are basically reformatting it into, um, yeah, a string value, which is usable. So in here you can see it's using a concatenation function and it's, it's writing uh, a name for a label and that's actually using that counter. So that counter starts at zero. So the first item would have persons uh, square bracket zero square bracket dot name as a label. And then after the colon, it has the actual value, which is the person's name from this map mapping. So that turns it in, into uh, a name array item. And then in the second part for the email array, we also have the same approach for the person's email item again with the counter. And obviously we want to have a, a different uh, number every single loop. So that's why you see this increment variable action, which adds a one to every loop it goes through. So zero, one, two, yeah, you, you know, yeah, that's, that's used for the counting. Um, so that should give us a list of um, emails and a person's names with indexes in them, which should be suitable for the SharePoint page. So that's where the last part of the flow, um, yeah, which is the create and publish page on SharePoint comes into play. So within this, um, we have three steps or three actions, all are of the same type. So the send an HTTP request to SharePoint actions. And the first one is actually to um, create a page. So in here you would select your target or yeah, your target site collection or site address. Um, the method is a post. So um, yeah, this is a post request and it's against the pages of the site pages library, which is the default location for these kind of pages in SharePoint. Um, for the headers, I'm using accept and content type and the verbose headers. So yeah, be aware that you use these kind of headers as well. And then in the body, I'm saying, yeah, just create a, a blank um, page. That's what this body says. So that's the first part. Um, the second part is uh, modifying that page. So again, choose the same site address, choose the post method, and then in the URI reference that specific newly created page. So we're doing that by using uh, pages and then referencing the ID. So in here you can see an expression which collects that ID of that previous um, yeah, created page. The reason why that 
headers of that first request is so important is because I'm uh, in this expression, I'm pointing to the ID. If you would use different headers, then it could, uh, the structure of that response could be different. So if you do change that, yeah, also change this expression to reflect that. <clears throat> so yeah, this should point to the right page. And then the save page method is used to actually modify the content. Um, so then the, the body itself, yeah, it looks very extensive uh, and it is, so I'm, I'm not gonna explain every single property in this body, but the most important two things are obviously our searchable plain text property, which is located here, and our persons property, which is located here. So in here in the searchable plain uh, text property, we're actually joining the name and email array together uh, with, with commas. And then we're actually also using replace functions to, um, yeah, to replace the quote characters and escape it with a backslash, like you can see in the rest of the JSON. So this is also escaped. So that's just to turn it into valid JSON. Um, so yeah, the, those two arrays are joined together in here with, yeah, with commas. And then for the persons, um, we're actually using the select. So you can see that in here, let me also hover over this. So in here, we're turning that, um, that persons, uh, select persons array into a string and also re escaping, um, the quote characters by using uh, a re replace function. So yeah, just to show you that, and obviously these expressions are also, I've also shared that in my blog, uh, which I will also put in the description of this video. So yeah, these are the two most important elements for, yeah, provisioning the data to that web part. Um, and then lastly, um, to see the actual page, um, and it will be published. So that's where this last action, or that's why this last action is created. So again, uh, same site address post method, referencing it with the same type of ID, only in this case using a publish and with a publish, yeah. You, don't really need a body. So yeah, that's about it. Um, hopefully it's clear. Uh, if you like this video, obviously subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter. Thanks for your time. Cheers.